Yes, good evening. The leading Welsh hope, Mark Williams, made it through his first round earlier on. We'll find out very shortly how he got on in round two. But first, some unfinished business from our evening programme. Ronnie O'Sullivan, who's been making one or two headlines today, got himself into a bit of trouble in his second round match against Rory McLeod. Two frames down he was before pulling it back to 2-2. We're going to join it in the fifth frame, described by Willie Thorne and Terry Griffiths. He's got a slight angle on this red. You can uh, push through and take the red on. Oh, he did the wrong side. The red got nearer the pocket after to kiss the yellow rock. One. A little too far there for the blue. That's what he played for. Barkle is always there to help you out. Oh, he hit that nice. Some shot, you know, even in these uh, five fast uh, tables. You swing the cue ball around the table like that. It's good timing and a very good cue action. Six. Uh, Solomon's got it all. Beautiful touch and plenty of power. Thirteen. Uh, Fox can put his foot down. 94 he made in the previous frame has uh, settled him down. He's a little bit unfortunate here, I think. Need to cut. Those reds a little bit thicker to stay on the red next Plenty. to the black. He can just get at this red. Oh, beautiful shot. 22. The pot wasn't the easiest one in the world to leave himself. He was expecting me right on it. And taking that into account, you know, the touch there to keep play a good cannon on the black. Looks a different player all of a sudden. That's amazing how he can not want to play to suddenly appear this back to normal. It's, it's weird. It really is. Third. Such a pleasure to watch when he's hitting the ball good. Like the match in the afternoon when he won 4 1, his opponent had two or three chances of frame. Rory McLeod's had, in the first four frames especially, had two or three chances. Normally you're glad with one. 37.
52. It's almost in the blink of an eye, isn't it? He's uh, scored this break of 53 and counting. Just coming up to four minutes of play, and this black will take him 60 points in front. This is what this massive crowd Six. has come to see. Ronnie O'Sullivan in full flight. And very bemused the way he played in the opening two and a half frames. Sixty-six. Sixty-seven. Seventy-two. 73. 8. 81. This has been a break of top quality. 88. 89. Is this the same man that came into the auditorium at 7 o'clock? 96. Broke Stephen Hendry's fantastic record a couple of weeks ago. 97. He's got 785 centuries now. Colour here. The 786 and the first in this tournament so far for Ronnie. 96. Very well done for a player who's totally been out of sorts. He's just turned the switch on. 102. From 2 0 behind. He's played flawless in the last two and a half frames. Amazing. 103. 106. 106. Well, what a shame, no complete clearance, but a lovely break of 106. And Mario Sullivan from 2 0 behind now leads by three frames to two. So O'Sullivan needing just one more frame to complete his comeback and make it through to the third round. We rejoin with McLeod trailing by 10 points. Good safety, caught a little bit thin. Left on the Sullivan a chance at a long red. It's been a good match this, you know. I mean, it's, it, it's all, you always get the unexpected in snooker, you know. The Sullivan is, didn't start great and then all of a sudden he started to play well and the cloud played quite well early on. You could still go to the decider, you don't know. He's trying to swing it round two cushions, possibly three, to try and kiss that red out that's near the cushion. Hmm, he's played the kennel on the red next to the yellow. And played it to perfection. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Unfortunately, he missed the pink. Yes, he could have caught yellow or, or red there, couldn't he? And, and got it out into the open. That's where he played that one properly. Well, 
so <laughs> moved a few balls anyway. Oh. One. Oh. Look a little, little bit unlucky there, unless the pink goes. Well, it does go. Do well to clear up from here. Careful not to snooker himself with the pink. Set. Not going back on his spot. Now then, can he hold himself together? Eight. One of the best shot he's ever played, to say the least. Yes, he wouldn't really fancy playing green to brown at this stage of the match. That's going to be the equation in two shots' time. Now he's left a good angle on this uh, yellow. Well, if he can play the cannon on the green, I'll play it. I wouldn't want to be playing the green down the cushion. Mm, it's too straight. Thought he'd got a half ball angle. That was a hit and hope, wasn't it? Brian Cloud. 40. He played, doesn't want it dead straight. And he's that's, well, if you try to get it dead straight, you never get it, would you? But it's like he's so good with his left hand, of course, that if he had a slight angle, he could come out for the brown. So he's got to leave an angle on the brown. Five. He's always going to be left tight on the cushion. He's looking at the scoreboard. He's uh, two f points in front now. Oh, what a great shot that was. Nice. Tight off the cushion. Horrible shot. He's blue and pink. Awesome. Well, it's Sullivan, it looks like, who's found something when he wanted it. Excellent stuff. Right. He's 2 0 behind against Rory McLeod, who's won four in the spin. It's yeah, Ronnie yeah. Sullivan who goes into the next round by four frames to two. Uh, a bit ropey at the start, you know, missed a few balls. Rory got in, you know, kind of dominated the early stages, but then I found a bit of rhythm and was able to win two or, th two or three games in with, with decent breaks and um, and tightened up a little bit, which was important, you know, especially after my first game. I was so open and loose coming into this match tonight in that same sort of vein. Probably um, was hard to kind of stamp my throat in the game early on. Winning tournaments is all about building momentum. And obviously I didn't really get any momentum in the first match. I was just lashing at balls and just trying to enjoy myself out there. But, um, you know, you just have to kind of tighten up a little bit. So I managed to do that as the match went on and kind of felt a little bit more sharper. You know that if you hit a rhythm, you hit a gear, you can make you can make four, five, six frames on the trot. So I wasn't panicking, but obviously um, it wasn't a nice position to be in. And, and the last frame is always the most difficult to win. So even though it's two nil and it's first to four, it's, it's still, you know, I still felt like I had some, you know, quite a bit of breathing space. Yes, the Rocket in a slightly better frame of mind than earlier on when he likened the venue to a shopping mall and described the atmosphere as being a little bit like a car boot sale. Uh, let's turn our attention to the leading Welsh contender, Mark Williams. These are the former champion's key stats.
So, in round two, Williams facing Barry Pinches from England, who's 87th in the world, never got further than the quarterfinals in a ranking tournament, and Williams has won five of their six previous meetings. Well, Williams took the first frame. We're going to join it in the second. Pinches to play, trailing by seven. Your commentators are Willie Thorne and Dominic Dale. One. Well, that's essential here. You must get the correct angle on the black. Eight. <clears throat> I mean, to be perfectly honest, I'd rather go into the pack off the blue here than the black. So if you don't get a good angle on the black, you can't play the shot. Oh, decided to risk opening him like that. Don't blame him if he's on the green in the middle, maybe. The black's still in place. So right. if it is not the green in, it could be a frame winner. You always run and look when you play things like that, don't you? Yeah, you are, Willie. The thing is, though, that there are six colours all over the table. You know, you, you, you're kind of unlucky if you don't finish on something. But, I mean, he's, he's basically finished there about eight inches from the bolt pocket. So, I mean, it's very unlucky. And can you just imagine the pressure on this green? You can't just drop it in dead weight because he'd be snookered on the red over the pocket by the blue if he just dropped it in dead weight. So he's got to just play with a little bit of control pace. It's a nasty shot, this. But to be honest, there aren't any other options. You wouldn't dare try to roll up behind the green. That's even harder. So he's got to go for it. Yes, he took it on wholeheartedly. <clears throat> In fairness, considering how far I missed it by, he's done well not to leave anything easy. I mean, when I say that, you'd expect him to pop this run in the middle, but being tight under the cushion, it could roll off. Played it nicely. One. Just don't know why Barry played that green with so much pace. I mean, he was in the jaws of the bolt pocket nearly. So queuing wasn't ideal anyway. And he almost sort of dips his shoulder into the shot when he when he when he played it. Let's have a Five. look at this. It's quite jabby, but you can see he's got his hand on the pocket plate there. Six. Nine. Ten. Well, now he's got rid of the green at that end of the table. These are perfect now. He doesn't have to worry about getting the pink into play. The, the next six reds and six blacks, or maybe the odd blue, is, is pretty straightforward. In saying that, he needed to be a little bit straighter on this round, I think. You can still get on the black nicely there. Eight. Eighteen. If you notice with Mark, every time he makes a break, it's always economy of power. He never really plays anything with tremendous power, Mark. It's all rolling balls in and soft five. screws and soft stuns. Always seems to find a way to play within himself. Well, he's just had another massive kick there. Matt Williams, 25. The problem is he was playing that with, with running side as well. When you have a kick using side spin, you always get a much worse effect. Just straight and right up. Very disconcerting. It really is, because when you're in the middle of a break in future frames, you just, you always 
conscious that you know the same thing can happen to you again. Oh, what a fantastic pot. Having been so unfortunate what? his last visit when he had that horrible kick. To play that dead weight. And he played it. He's very clever, Mark. He's always looking at positions. He plays shots. And you think, why has he played that? Then even if he misses it, he's in this such a position where it was a shot to nothing. He got another half a kick there, I think. Oh, he's uh, a little bit concerned about the, the pace the cue all came off the cushion, but... Let's have a little look. Eight. It didn't appear to be a kick, but it certainly came off a little bit dead off the cushion. Yeah, the black hit the near jaw as well, which is, you never aim for the near jaw when you pot a black. They did an experiment in one of the PTCs, I think it was in Germany, um, with uh, a, a certain proprietary brand of ball cleaner. It's basically a cream and uh, one of the referees was in the office polishing every single ball and, and actually they were like glass the, the, the conditions I mean the, the balls were so slippery smooth you had the most fantastic reactions out the balls and you, you very seldom had a kick the problem is you play a couple of half an hour frames and all of a sudden the balls go back to their normal state their natural state and you start getting kicks and bad bounces and everything again and it's it's a bit of a ridiculous thing to do, really. You don't want the conditions of the balls to change mid-match. So I'm not really in favour of this idea at all. A lot of my fellow professionals aren't either. Decided to risk that pot. He's not going to have any idea where that red's going to end up. If it passes the blue, it could be costly. Probably play a little cannon here on a ball colour just to hold the white. Mm, didn't quite get the cannon right though, did he? Well, but he caught that brown a little bit thicker. He's still on the blue nicely. So 32 points in front and counting. Strong favourite to take a 2 0 lead. Six.
did you see that cue ball bounce 12. there off the side cushion? Flew off. You can see it in Mark's face, a look of disgust. But he's 13. 44 points to the good now. On a colour nicely. Only 59 remaining, so his work in this frame is almost done. So 51 points in front with 51 on 20. the red to make this frame safe. Not had a Great deal of chances in this match so far. Barry Pinches, amazing enough, his ice break is only 20 so far, but hasn't really been in the balls. 21. This second frame absolutely certain for Mark. He'll probably play for a double here on the last red. He's good at these, Mark. 31. He's won both of these two frames pretty, pretty comfortably. His opponent scoring just 29 points in the first frame and only nine in this. Wow. Oh, Black hit the back of the I'm pocket afraid. and jumped straight back out on the table. That's one for the fitters to look at, but won't bother Mark. He's done more than enough to win the second frame, and he takes a two frames to nil lead. Well, Pinches won frame three, but in the fourth frame, he's 26 behind. All right, 26 points behind, but 27 remaining. He's every ball on the table. Another mistake from Mark. There's a good angle on this yellow for Barry to get behind that green to play it into the top left-hand pocket. Big chances for Barry because if he could pot the yellow and get on the green, he could leave himself on the brown to develop the blue and all of a sudden this frame could change dramatically. didn't commit to position on the green but he he could lay a very difficult snooker right behind the blue here if he wants to I'm just thinking the way Barry is at the moment some players would take this green on but I don't think Barry's in that sort of frame of mind Five pinches, two. <clears throat> well, 
that's uh, one of Mark's worst shots he's ever played. Now Barry, can he get the half ball cannon on the blue and still be on the brown? Anything can go if he catches, catches the blue pool ball, it's no good. Three. Mm, unlucky. Well, the brown's near enough to the pocket for Barry to risk digging down onto this. It's not a pot he should miss, even if he does really jack that cue in the air and try and get some backspin on this. He could either cannon the blue or land behind it. No. Oh, he's used power there to create the angle, but unfortunately... Seven. Well, I say unfortunately, what a kiss on the black for the, from the blue there. I'm sure Barry was expecting a difficult safety. All of a sudden, he's got a chance to sneak and win this frame. Huge slice of luck for Barry. Now, oh, is he on the pink? Twelve. <clears throat> oh. It's not bad. OK, he won't be able to play this in the corner pocket as we look. Angle's no good to get on the black, but the middle pocket's no problem. He's playing in the corner. Really? Surely the cut in the centre's a shot. Massive frame this in the context of this match for Barry Pinches. Looks a no hoper for him. He's way behind all the way through this frame up until now. Well, he's gone all round the angles here. Hasn't hit it hard enough. 18. Oh, he would be <clears> disappointed. <throat> Still on this black, but there's a lot of pressure on it. Oh, that's a great pop from Barry Pinches, as long as he doesn't go in off, which he hasn't done. Well, no breaks of any frame. note in that frame, Barry. a frame which lasted <clears throat> some 39 minutes, but it's Barry Pinches who wins it and levels a match at two frames all. Well, Williams won frame five with breaks of 45 and 27. This match still going on. We are heading into Tuesday. It's the early stages of frame six. Let's join our commentators, Willie and Dominic. Good evening, everybody. Join us at a pretty critical juncture in this match. Frame six in the balance. Not a lot gone on in this frame. A lot of great safety play, which has tied a lot of these reds up. But uh, it's been ebbing and flowing, this frame. Just the one point in it, in Mark Williams' favour. Been a lot of great safety play in this match, but nothing much in terms of breaks. 45 still the highest from Mark Williams in that previous frame. Other than that, there's only been a 29 and a 32. It's rather incredible. You'd never ever think Mark Williams could play five frames with the highest break of 45. But that's what's happened. Didn't want that jaw. This left this red on. I say left it on. It's a hard pot the way these guys have been struggling this evening. But that's opened things up. Uh, is he on the black? It, it, the black would be easier than the pink, and he is on the black. Nothing straightforward at this stage of the match, though. Good pot though that is. That's that's a good pot. Chance of winning frame and match now. You can see him getting the next three reds, three colours without a problem. Eight. Which will put him past the winning line. And then need that one more red after that.
nine. Seven. Mark Williams has got so much experience, he realises now that even how poorly he's played, this is a great chance to win the match. Not curing well this evening, every time he plays a screw shot he seems to be jabbing at it, he's not getting through the ball at all. Well, that may be a bonus. He may have the angle on the blue here to get onto the last red. He's playing the yellow. Going to have to go off two cushions. On too high, has he? Oh, no, he's played it nicely. Well done. 27. <clears throat> it's just about finished. As badly as it could have done. You can definitely miss these. It's in though. 28. The problem is he's just going to need that tricky last red. He's not badly on the blue here. He's dead straight but he can leave himself some sort of a shot on this remaining red. Which would be frame a match ball for him. Well, because it is frame and match ball, he may take it on, but he's not potted many long balls this evening. Matt Williams, 33. At first glance, I think he's got away with that. in the balance this frame because if you look at the position of the balls and especially now after that great safety from Barry Pinches which has snookered Mark on this final red that 34 points lead well, I was going to say may evaporate but uh, that's a brilliant shot from Mark couldn't have struck that better just having a look to see if he snookered Barry back which he has done Careful, it doesn't go in off or something like that. Is he in off? Is he in off? Well, oh. that's very, very unfortunate for Barry Pinches. That could spell disaster for him now in this match. Ball in hand for Mark Williams. Barry already needs a snooker. And that could be the end for Barry now. Yes, yeah, so a red goes in, and all of a sudden, from nowhere, Mark Williams has done enough to win this match 4-2. surprised Barry carrying on 41 points behind just 27 remaining four snookers required
Yes, this has been a match that hasn't really got off the starting pad. Both players played some wonderful safety. Perry Pinch has done well to stay in the match the way it's gone. of course he'll have a day off tomorrow and he's played two matches today he'll be very very pleased to have got over the line Even though Mark, I think it's safe to say, will win this match, his form tonight will give him some concerns for the next rounds ahead. Amazing that Mark could win a match like this with without Same making a 50 break. Mark, Mark In fact, Rough after right potting that yellow, yeah. Barry Pinches does offer his hand in congratulations to Mark Williams, who goes through to the next round, a winner by four frames to two. So, yes, Mark Williams through, and it will be an all-Welsh affair in round three, because Williams will play Jamie Jones, who earlier pulled off arguably the shock of the day in beating the Masters champion, Sean Murphy. I felt a little bit more pressure there tonight because there's a hell of a lot of people here supporting me. There's, a, there's a, about 15, 20 people from Neath come up and obviously there's Welsh snooker fans who will know who I am probably now. Um, so there was plenty of support in there which put a little bit more of edge on the game, you know. But I mean, it's a, it's a lovely win in front of my own crowd, yeah. And more good news earlier this evening. Uh, Matthew Stevens beating the former world champion uh, Ken Doherty by the same scoreline, uh, winning a final frame decider to book his place in round three. And some other results for you. Mark Allen winning 4-3 against Kai Yu Peng. Neil Robertson uh, beat David Morris uh, convincingly, a 4-0 win. Uh, Ali Carter going through by the same scoreline against Mark King. It was a 4-2 win for Marco Fu against Dechewat Pum Yang. And a good win as well for Judd Trump today. He beat uh, Mark Joyce 4-0 earlier on. So that's it. An exciting first day of the Bet Victor Welsh Open. I don't know about you, but we're going to go and have a lie down. We'll be back tomorrow o'clock, 1 o'clock on BBC Two Wales. From all of us, for now, it's good night.